Welcome to Life Blood. This is George G, and the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful Michael Armsby. Michael, are you ready to do this? Yes, I'm ready. Let's get after it. Let's 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 go. Michael is the CFO of Human Interest. They're an organization working to solve America's retirement savings crisis and shake up the retirement industry. Excited to have you on. Michael, tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. Uh, great. Yeah. So it's great to be with you, George. Um, so personal life, I grew up in the Bay Area, uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Um, went to college twice east, but always came back to the Bay Area uh, to live. Uh, raised a family, uh, four kids. Uh, got two boys out of college who were both gainfully employed. Congratulations. Uh, and, thank you. And two girls, uh, two girls in high school. So yeah, pl plenty going on. Uh, my wife and I are both pretty active locally. Uh, she's le with some uh, town and educational boards, and I'm actually board president for our local swim and tennis club. So we stay, we stay active. Um, and then professionally, um, you know, I, I, I kind of started my career in both finance and strategy consulting lanes, and it kind of got me geared towards operational finance, financial leadership, um, and kind of the CFO lane. And so, so I've now been a CFO for the last 15 years, and human interest is actually the fifth CFO role, CFO role that, that I've started. Um, the prior four, the first two were in clean tech, and then the last two uh, were fintech companies. Um, notably, Yodely was one I took public in 2014. And in fact, all four companies that I've joined are now public in one way, shape, or form, whether they directly went public or were acquired. So um, it really got into you know, this lane where professionally I love being with fast growing technology enabled uh, businesses, most, re most recently FinTech. And that's what brought me to human interest because it's really just a powerful story, a great company, and really uh, leverages a lot of the experiences where I've been. Nice. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Sometimes when I hear that a company is disruptive, I think, ah, okay, maybe, but it strikes me that, that the world of 401ks is just ready to actually be disrupted. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and there's a ton of energy around this, both with employers, uh, you'll see, and there's been a lot of activity uh, in government, both state and federally, around really solving, you know, the core problem that our company, Human Interest, was was founded to solve, which is this looming retirement crisis in our country. And if you look at it, there's tens of millions of Americans that are saving either nothing or next to nothing for retirement. And when you double click there, kind of the core reason is that fundamentally their employers don't offer a 401k plan. And so human interest was founded and has been organized around solving that with great technology and creating just a really simple, easy to use, easy to implement plan that you know, was originally designed for smaller businesses, but really it's been, uh, been well received by businesses of all sizes. So it's really, really taking that crisis in our country and getting to, to better save for retirement. Nice. So tens of millions of people, I, I can remember at one point, I think I read a statistic that employees are half of the employees at, well, now, 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 now I'm going to butcher that, but literally <laughs> tens of millions of employees are working at companies that just don't offer 401k yes. plans or retirement plans. Yeah, depending on how you define it, it's somewhere between 50, 80 million, but these are largely with employees that aren't saving enough for retirement and they are employees of small businesses, whether it's, you know, five person uh, employers all the way up to a couple hundred. Many of them don't have 401k solutions because what's been out there in the market is very complex. It's hard to administer. Uh, it's very costly. And, you know, small businesses don't have, you know, finance people or a finance team or really can deal with the kind of compliance complexity. And we take that all off their hands. We create a really easy to use, easy to launch and run 401k that can help them bring that benefit to their employees because you know financial wellness and being competitive as an employer means you need to have a good 401k these days why is it that prior to human interest and other, other companies similar to yours mm -hmm. that that a 401k is is so hard to set up administer govern yeah well well in part because you know the the solutions and the plans that have been out there um, for many years are really designed for larger businesses. Mm. And so part of what I was getting at is you really need to have a finance person or a team that can handle 
syncing and reconciling with payroll um, and addressing compliance requirements and reporting uh, needs and tax issues. So we try to take all of that off your hands. We partner with many payroll providers to make that sync automatic. Uh, and we take the complexity of compliance and reporting largely off of our uh, clients' hands. But that's what has been an impediment in addition to the cost, because I think existing solutions are just designed for bigger companies and are for higher costs, both to the employer and to the participants. We try to make that very simple and much more cost-effective at the same time. So they're, they're extremely complex. They're really expensive. They're hard to understand. It's a wonder. And, and <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and really difficult to, to administer. So it's right. certainly not a surprise that yeah, half and the so, companies are there. Yeah. So if you're an employer with, you know, a typical employer might have 40, 50 employees, you don't have a finance team. You've probably outsourced, you know, finance and record keeping. How can you handle that type of plan? It's just not, there weren't, there weren't good solutions until that's what we, we, we came along to try to solve. Got it. So y'all looked at the problem. You said, okay, I think we understand what we're trying to accomplish here. Allow for people to be saving money for their long-term retirement plan. How can we bring technology to the table? Tell me about how, how, how it is that you were able to sort of bridge the gap. Well, I think we've tried to make the solution as simple and as straightforward for both employers and the employees or participants as possible to kind of take a lot of the mystery and some of those blockers out of participating in a 401k. So, um, so I think simplicity has been one key design principle. And what we've seen is we're able to use our technology to really drive you know, what a 401k is intending to do, uh, which is great participation rates and great contribution rates. So we, we see participation rates up into the 70% of our employers that launch our plan, whereas typical industry participation rates are much lower than that, below 50. And we see great contribution rates, including in many cases an employer match that we, we encourage because that also uh, drives participation. Uh, but we see great um, results in bringing technology and simplicity and elegance to get people to join, auto-enroll, participate, and be contributing to their own retirement. Fascinating that uh, there's so many different things to be sort of thinking about and focused mm-hmm. on. That we, you touched on plan design. If it's if they're going to offer a match, you talked about understanding how much people need to be saving. So the contribution rates and should I even get involved in, right. in the plan in the first place, the participation. Um, I imagine a lot of it is just split testing or trying different things, but right. language well, and jargon. Yeah, no, exactly. And so there's a lot to understand and learn. And so one thing we've done, and I encourage anyone who wants to learn more, you know, to visit our website, we have a whole learning hub and that whole learning center has has information both for employers and employees, and you could subscribe to a a newsletter, but it's a good way to learn a lot about what are the requirements, what can I do, you know, what do we offer? So I would just encourage people to learn more because it it is a a nuanced topic that um, it's important for employers to get smart about as they are launching a plan. Yeah. So as you are, as, as, as the team is out talking to potential companies who want to implement a 401k plan, Mm -hmm. what is that, how everybody's going to be different. Some people need to know everything about that. They're they're interested in taking the watch apart. Other people are like, just tell me what time it is. So Mm -hmm. how do you, how do you make it accessible and sort of meet the employers where they are? Well, I think you have to do just that. You meet the employers where they are. And many of them want, you know, some, uh, a pretty, you know, simple, tell me how it's going to work. Tell me that it can be taken care of. Tell me that we could administer this uh, clearly, but, but essentially I'll be providing an important benefit to my employees. I'll be providing a benefit that makes me attractive competitively. And, and I think, Meeting them where they are on those terms is really what's fundamental to, to our dialogue. You know, one, one thing I'd say is, you know, we typically, I think the majority of our new employers we bring onto our platform, they've, they've had no prior solution. Hmm. It kind of speaks to this, the problem that we're addressing because um, they had no prior 401k. And so they're implementing one for the first time. So there they want to learn a lot about how it works and what the requirements are. But now we're also seeing more of what we call conversion 
uh, plans where uh, a company is seeing our platform as attractive compared to where they are and they're, they're moving over to, to, to human interest. So we've seen both. Um, and the other theme I'd say, which is kind of where they are, is kind of now the environment we're seeing in government that there are, I think it's now 24 states have some type of uh, mandate around employers offering retirement programs. Uh, and this has just come out over the last year or two. And in fact, there's now federal legislation and uh, um, the Ways and Means Committee um, uh, in Congress looking at a federal mandate that employers, and this is down to employers of five or more employees that they look to offer um, retirement plans. So there's a really good momentum in that the, you know, these mandates are there because I think government is recognizing the same kind of looming retirement crisis and, and trying to encourage employers to, to offer these types of plans. And, and we're there to help fill that gap. Nice. I appreciate that. So simplicity, um, the ability to, I, I, for, for, for lack of a t- better term, perhaps nimble, that human interest mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. I don't want to call you small. I don't want to call you scrappy, but you are smaller and probably scrappier than fidelity. Oh, sure. There, <laughs> there's some big giants in this space, uh, but we have ambitions to be, you know, to grow and be, be a fun, a, a leader uh, in this emerging part of the market. Yeah, certainly. And, and with that growth comes, comes change. You talked about with, with Yodely and then with, um, mm-hmm. with personal capital, taking these companies public or, or selling them. Mm-hmm. How, how, how do you think about the private company versus public company from a simplicity standpoint? Does that totally change things? Um, no, I, I don't think it changes things. I think it just, um, there's, there's lots of great options in the market today for really good companies to grow. And we've been you know, fortunate. We've, we've had um, some successful financings. We brought on some great growth capital partners in our recent financing. And so there is great access to capital for good companies that have great growth stories like ours uh, to continue to raise capital and grow. And you could do that publicly or privately. You know, we see ourselves as really having a, a great foundation uh, to be a, a public company. Um, you know, a great large market that we're uniquely positioned to solve with a great technology solution, one where we're growing. We have inherent growth in both our employers and our our, our participant economics. And so we see that that is clearly an option and something we're, we're looking towards. But but I think, you know, it doesn't change the complexity of how we go to market. I think fundamentally, we just focus on our execution and creating the best product for, for our employers. Yeah, that, that, that certainly does make a lot of sense. And yeah. so long as you are staying true to your mission and, and yeah. your values of serving people and, and bringing the solution to as many companies, as many participants as possible, yeah, and, I, and that's the whole game. So I would encourage people if they're thinking about this, you know, one, if you're an employer yourself, you know, we're happy to to help work with you, um, go through, you know, some education and and consider the right solution for your company. If you're an employee at a, at a business that, that doesn't have a 401k, you know, definitely talk to, to us or your benefits advisor, whoever it may be that helps manage, you know, employee wellness uh, for your company, you know, definitely point them our way and we, and we can help you out. Nice. I appreciate that. So the desire of, of human interest to, 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 to meet your mission statement and to be profitable and to grow and all these things while you are making decisions about pricing. So you want to make it so probably you don't want to be the cheapest out there, but Mm -hmm. you also don't want to be perceived as really expensive. And, and so how, how do you think about that? Um, well, I think you're right. We want to make it again both simple and and also very and straightforward and also very effective economically for our employers and the participants. And so, one simple is important because you know this industry uh, has many hidden fees and um, many economics that are not as clear to both participants and employee, employers when they're launching a 401k. So we try to make that very simple, and we have a very straightforward forward kind of one fee simple approach for both employers and participants. Uh, so that transparency is very important to us. Um, we want, I think we're very clear that when you look at the all-in cost of our solution versus kind of the, the incumbents out there in the 401k space, it's at least you know a half to a third 
as expensive as what an all-in cost for other 401ks can be. And that's, that's leveraging technology and our ability to scale a more efficient business that's really designed for these types of um, maybe smaller businesses, but growing businesses deployments. You hit on something that's really near and dear to my heart is that there are hidden fees. I remember when I started mm. in the financial services industry, it was clear as mud how much stuff cost, particularly yes. how much a 401k cost. And yes. so it's so wonderful that that has become a little bit more transparent, but even more wonderful that companies like Human Interest are coming to the market and saying, here's how much it costs. Here's how much yes. the company is paying. Here's how much you as the employee are, are paying or getting charged. I think that that's right. so important. It yeah, because in the end, if it's not there, like there may be compliance requirements, reporting requirements. Oh, that's an upcharge. That's an added fee to the employer or participants. Like they don't know what is the actual load of the funds that are being promoted or required for you to take into your investment account. That's that's part of the actual total economics to the participant. And we make that all simple and very straightforward and, and effective. Yeah. Another thing that that has been sort of on the tip of everybody's tongue that's in the 401k industry, it seems over the past four or five years and probably just financial stuff in general is, is fiduciary and fiduciary mm. responsibility. And yep. there's certainly a lot of that going on with 401k and for good reason, but how do y'all think about fiduciary? Well, I, I think it's fundamental to, I think our, our mission and vision is that not only do you want to be transparent and be effective, but you want to, do what is in the client's best interest and we're we're an asset advisor we're we're you know um, um, um uh, you know managing these participants assets so we have to do what is right and in the interests of our participants and i think that's fundamental to you know um how a business should be run as well as how uh, the, the industry should be organized so so i think you know we want to help employers also act as fiduciaries and find good wellness and uh, retirement programs that are in their employees' best interest as employers. So I think it's very fundamental to how we, we view the world. Nice. I like it. Well, Michael, people yeah. are ready for that difference-making tip. What do you have for them? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's not going to be a surprise because it's, it's about 401ks. And I, and I, would, I would say, you know, the difference-making tip, and it really is, and this is what I told my own sons who are now both employed and working, I said, you know, if there's nothing else you do, please participate in and max out your 401k because you know, your future self will thank you uh, for that. And starting early, or if you haven't started, you know, jump start it because there's ways to do that. Um, and if your employer doesn't have one, you know, have them talk to us and we can help you out. Well, I think that is great stuff that definitely gets come up. Well said right there. I, I've been telling my uh, been telling my five and two-year-old that all morning. Said, whatever you do, <laughs> if you started right now, you would only yeah. have to save a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, my and my sons, when I told them that, he said, "What do you mean?" I said, well, "Let me explain it to you." And then I think they kind of got it, but they are they are maxing out their four hundred one k. So, oh, well, awesome! I think that's great news. Well, Michael, thank thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you, and where can they engage with Human Interest? Um, just find us, you know, online. We have a, a website as well as on all the social channels, just human interest, either, you know, Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed this as much as I did, show Michael your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, go to humaninterest.com and check out all the great resources they have. Take advantage of the learning library that Michael mentioned mm -hmm. and you know, start the conversation about bringing a 401k to your company for your people. And also on social media, I'll list all those in the notes of the show. Thanks again, Michael. All right. Thanks, George. All right. And until next time, keep fighting the good fight. We are all in this together. <laughs>